Doing as told, I follow Monica to the teacher's desk where she pulled out a page from one of the drawers and placed it on the table. Looking through the list, I see all the girls' names and numbers written down, including the date of when they joined. Huh. Natsuki was the first one to join. Then how come Sayori is the vice president of the place? Is it really about qualification in that matter? Is something wrong, Hallie? Huh? Oh, no. I was just wondering about this list. Having our names and numbers for a club seems a bit new to me. Is it tight security or something? Not in this case, no. It's really for our own benefit. We can easily keep in contact with each other, and I can add you into the club's group chat where we can share information about future activities and more. Secondly, it's part of school rules to mark down members so they can actually consider us an official club. Oh, sorry, an official club. Oh, so there's, an, or there's a requirement. Yep, at least five members count as an official club amongst the minor ones. So that's why Siri was at my neck for that long. <laughs> I'm sorry she pushed you so much about it. Eh, it's cool. I had every intention on joining either way, so she was poking at the right places. I proceed to finish adding my information to the members list before handing it to Monica, who then takes a look at it to see if everything's in place. Well then, Hallie. We now officially welcome you as a member of the Literature Club. Glad to be here. It actually took me a while to notice this, considering everything that happened up to this point. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. And Natsuki. I guess it really hadn't sunk in, but I'll be spending the rest of my days after school with them. Is this even legal anymore? Okay, everyone. With that out of the way, I think it's time we head home. For tomorrow's meeting, I have something planned that I'll share in the group chat later today. So make sure to keep an eye on it and have a safe journey home. The girls had already gotten their bags while I was busy, so they were quick to head out. I went over to grab my own bag. In the corner of my eye, I saw Natsuki leaving last, which made me awkwardly wince. I could have said bye for the day, at least. Once I retrieved my bag and began looking through it, making sure everything was in place, sentence fragment, it only took a few seconds, but once I finished, I swung my bag over my shoulder and turned around to see a flash of pink in my face. Well, uh, hey there. How the hell did she come back in that fast? So, we have a lot to talk about. You think? But let's move this outside. I say, pointing towards Monica, who is standing at the door, completely static, with a smile on her face, while she spun the room keys on her finger. It'd be rude of me to say it's actually creepy. Right! Not can I wave Monica goodbye and head outside. Even though I said we should talk outside, we end up walking down the hall in complete silence while I pretend I don't notice her sneaking glances at me. This continued for a good while until we eventually left the building. I didn't spot the rest of the girls on the way out, but rather other clubs making their usual commute as they head home or hang out or hang around outside. Natsuki and I exit to the main gate where she eventually comes to an abrupt halt. My house is this way, so... Oh, alright. I wonder if I can take this time to actually work things out with her. Or rather, start somewhere. Oh, I guess. We've got choices. Select this to save menu. There you go. Can't hide it for me. Let's offer Walker home. It'll be sundown any minute, though. If you still want, if you still want to talk, I can walk with you to your place, and we could probably talk on the way. I don't have to come. No. Okay. I'm really taken aback by this outburst, but the reasoning behind it clicks immediately. Not. Is he still being... difficult? That's none of your freaking business! What the... Of course it is. I'm your friend. I... was trying to... I still remember the things you told me about him, about how you didn't want to... Well, you're not to me! I'm... She runs off down the road, leaving me here in a whirlpool of confusion and worry. I don't even look at her when she darted past me. I just stand there and stare at the space she occupied a few seconds ago. I want to follow her. I want to know what's going on. She ran away from me again out of fear. But my mind tells me that would be a bad idea, seeing that it's in her best effort to keep me away from there. In her best interest, you mean? I don't want her to start avoiding me completely. What's happened to her? I reached home and quickly changed out of my uniform, then slumped down on my bed after freshening up. Slumped, if we're talking past tense here. With my chin resting in my hand, I begin 
replaying the entire day in my mind and finally taking the realization of how much has happened. I begin regretting the things I said and didn't say. Curse myself out for them. Confuse myself of what I'm supposed to feel. Think about Natsuki. I always did wonder about why she never wanted me over at her house when we were kids, but now the thought just lingers into worrisome territories. And the reaction I received today was lightning, er, lighting the fuse for me. An issue for another day, I guess. I sigh and decide to lie down on my bed completely and delete my thoughts by staring at the white ceiling up top. Suddenly, my phone begins buzzing like crazy to the point that it almost fell off the side table. What the hell? I grab my phone and press the finger scanner to reveal what's behind. The bold title of The Literature Club brightens up the screen as I now understood what was going on. Now understand. Present tense to understanding. I guess Monica pulled me into the GC already. Welcome to the humble abode of the humble abode, Howie! Hmm? Humble abode what? Oh, Howie's here now too! Yeah, not like I'm 15 steps away from you. Hmm. Oh yeah, you're my neighbor! I'm gonna check if I can see you through my window! You're... Oh, you two live next to each other! Apparently. Well, that's interesting. And hello, Holly. So. Okay, everyone. For tomorrow's meeting, we will be meeting at the roof. So if you do want to run late for the meeting, just drop your bags or drop you bags at the club and come up. I'll be heading there directly after unlocking the club room, so no need to wait for me there. Once we're all together, we will begin a special activity I plan. I planned. Oh. Club meeting outdoors. That sounds fun. That. All right then. Understood. Okay. Huh. At least Natsuki said something here. And that also means she'll be coming tomorrow, so I can at least rest easy knowing she won't stay away from the club because I'm there. And meeting on the rooftop for a special activity, huh? That's something to look forward to, I guess. Since I am part of the club, now I have to fill my end of the bargain here, which shouldn't be a challenge, really. Looking at the chat again, I chuckle, then head out to the guest room next to mine and to walk out to the balcony. You should get that, like, that 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 phone app thingy that people made for mods. The cold wind brushes out my hair in a strong gust once I step out. Ignoring it, I look to the left and spot Sayori leaning out from her window, waving at me frantically. Hey, Howie! Hey. They wave back with a wide smile on my face. This girl really is a goofball. Careful, you're going to fall into your own yard! I'm fine! You're coming to the meeting tomorrow, right? Yeah? Good, because that means we're going to start walking back home together, too! Sure, I'm cool with that. Quite down already! Some of us have work at night! Oh, it was an elderly... An elderly woman from across the street pries open her window and yells at the two of us, which causes me to retreat. Sorry, Mrs. Shiro! Oh, she's definitely still here. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Mom's going to be happy to hear that. Once I re-enter my room, my phone buzzes again. Nice going, dummy. Hey, who were you like to? Barely. My message is received as read, so I drop my phone onto my bed and sigh to myself once again. I really don't have much else to do today until dinner. Groceries are stable, and I even got the Wi-Fi running in here, hence the message spam in the club's group chat. Speaking of the club, I kneel down on the side of my bed. Unzipping my bag and pulling my book out, I decide to use this opportunity of loitering to get started and to take my mind off er, mind of things. This will give me a bit of a head start on things to talk about and involve myself more in the club. Dots. Mom, I just lied down. I was going to bed early anyway until you called. Of course you were. Ugh, anyway. I do have something really important to tell you before I go to, or before I do go to bed. Hmm? You won't believe who I ran into today. Another day of school and another struggle of a sore butt. Although this time I seem to be the first one here. I got up really early and used this excuse to get Sayori to wake up early too with masses of texts and phone calls. Man, I didn't know I'd feel this energized today or for any school day for that matter. Sleeping early can't have this much effect on you, can it? My walk with Sayori today was more active as well with the two of us playing a guessing game of what could be today's club activity. The one who guessed wrong gets to buy the other a soda. Even though I agreed, I felt like I was in the disadvantage because Sayori knew Monica more than me, so she'd have a better idea of what goes on in her head. What if you both get it wrong? Do you buy each other sodas? 
Usually I wouldn't even be paying attention to what she says because I'd be sleepwalking halfway. You seem to be in a good mood today. You even made it to class before me. Is the freshman trying to one-up the class rep on his second week? Kotonoha sat down on her usual spot next to me as she giggled after her tease slash greeting. Oh hey, no, I'm just feeling more fresh than usual today. Oh, any special reason? I don't know, it's probably just because I woke up early. Actually, remember that talk we had at the park? Uh-huh. I raise an eyebrow at her as I give her a knowing look to which she catches on rather quickly. Wait, really? Did you talk to her? Talk would be an understatement. It was kind of exactly how I pictured it. We met, she cried, I cried, we start screaming at each other. She told me how much my leave affected her in some detail. I told me her, told me that she gave up on me and told me that I'm not a friend to her anymore. <sighs> and? And uh, she said she missed me. So I guess that counts for something. We still haven't exactly worked things out since the time and place wasn't the best, but she did offer to talk about it sometime later. And how did you run into her? To keep it short, I wanted to join a club for some time now, and yesterday I did. She just so happens to be part of that club, too. Wait, so she's in this school? Yep. Huh. What club? It's Literature Club. I officially became a member yesterday, although someone had been asking me about it since day one. Literature, huh? Well, I don't know much about you, but I didn't expect you to be interested in something like that. Looking at the front of the class, we see the teacher shutting the door loudly on purpose to grab our attention and silence us. That wasn't a very loud shutting of a door, my sir. This also made me look around the room and find it to be completely filled. Don't know how neither of us noticed him or any of the students enter. It would actually be either in this case. Don't need that in. To be continued. Well, the two of us share a smile before turning our attention towards this teacher as the roll call begins. Oh, I thought he was signaling the end of the demo. No, he was talking to Koto. And now to struggle through another day of school that I've... Wait, I've already complained about school. A second time isn't going to cut it short. Lunch period finally comes around and I don't wait around much for it. I have to talk to Natsuki today and I don't exactly see time for it at the club, so break is my best shot for now. I head towards the door only to be called out to by Kotonoha. Wait up, Hallie. Before you head out, I wanted to let you know that you're going to need a few notes for chemistry since we've covered a good portion of it before you started. If you want, I can hand you mine or ask someone in class if they're willing to give you some. Oh, that'd be great, actually. If it's no trouble, then. None at all. I'll hand you the important stuff after break since we do have chemistry today. Alright, thanks, Koto. I turned to leave again, only to realize what I just said and turn back around. Koto, huh? <laughs> sorry. No offense or anything, but Koto no huh, seemed like a mouthful, so it just slipped. <laughs> Relax. I get that a lot, actually, but to counter that, people just don't call me by my name at all. I kinda like it. Right, so... I'm gonna head out now. Alright, I'll see you later. Once again, when I step out, I take a deep breath and push out my embarrassment as if it were a waterfall. Okay, this time you forgot the second S. Why do I always end up getting like this around her? I guess I'm still not used to being around people like her. She kinda reminds me of how Monica is, even though I only met her yesterday. I slap my cheeks with both hands to shake up my head and begin walking down the hall. I did say that I needed to take this opportunity to talk to Natsuki, but I don't have the slightest clue how. We never agreed to actually meeting anywhere, nor do I have any way of letting her know. Wait. I pull my phone out of my pocket and quickly open up the group chat to see Natsuki's profile there. Hmm. Should I? Is it too much? I don't want to weird her out or anything. No, I said I'd try, and if it takes this to make the first step, then so be it. Tapping on Natsuki's profile, I get a hold of her number and shoot her a text as I continue walking. Hey, Nat, it's me, Hallie. And now I wait. Honestly, I don't even know if she'll respond to me or straight up block me. Oh, hey, how did you get my number? The GC? Figures, so what is it? Nothing much, I was just hoping if you want to eat lunch together or just talk. I got nothing going on right now, so I thought it'd be a good time. There's no response for a while, uh, for a few minutes until Natsuki starts typing again, but even that takes a long time. I can't tell if she's typing up a wall or if she's stuck on considering it or not. Hey, meet me down at the vending machine. It's really the only one at school, so you can't miss it. All right. Even though I already knew that or where the vending machine was, it was actually news to me that it's the only one. 
Without wasting much time, I quickly head back down the path I had come from and to make my way down the stairs. Once I reach the location, I don't see Natsuki anywhere, which was expected. I was already near the place when she told me where to meet, so I came by quicker. I sit down at the stairs and wait for her to show up. Not long after, I hear footsteps behind me as I turn to see the source. Hey there. Hey! Off to a good start, aren't we? So, how did the day treat you so far? Fine, really. Although I don't remember a single word from history class. Same. For me, it feels like I do that on purpose, though. Like, I know it's not that hard of a subject, but I just find it so boring most of the time. I'm with you there, Hallie. I've read some books or manga based on old history, too, but... Hearing all of it from someone else just isn't your thing. Not one bit. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. But sometimes it's not even about if it's boring to listen to or not. History's supposed to be about the who, what, when, and whys. All I've heard is when, 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 when. Exactly. I get that dates are a crucial part of the subject, but they aren't everything. I actually want to know more about the war rather than just learning when it happened. Sounds like he got stuck with the same teacher. It's my second week and I already feel burnt out by him. <laughs> Spoken like a true freshman. Oh, the pain. I'm sorry about yesterday. Huh? About screaming at you like that. I didn't mean for it to come out like that. I was just caught off guard and so confused I... It's alright, Not. You were right. It really wasn't my place to keep pestering you about. No! You were just trying to be nice and I said stupid things I didn't... I... Ah... Uh... I do see you as a friend. Or rather, I want to see it that way again. But I'm just so confused about everything. I don't know how much has changed or how much you have, and I'm scared that... Things won't work out no matter how much you want them to? This is something entirely new to me. I knew that we'd grow up and mature or change in certain ways, but with how Natsuki is being right now is not how I remember her. She used to the one used to be the one to always fight back and stand up for me, even, or never show any signs of weakness or fear. Now she's insecure and afraid. This can't just be because of me, can it? Something else is going on here that I have yet to find out. Even now, when she apologized, she tried to leave out the main reasons for why she did what she did back then. The topic of her family has become an even more dangerous bull to tackle, and I'll have to work my way up to it eventually. But for now. I know I haven't shown the best example of keeping promises, but I need you to trust me on this one. For all those years, I never forgot about you, nor gave up. I planned on coming back a day after we left, knowing that I'd grow up and be able to leave on my own and come back to you. Made plans about how I'd say sorry. I was still a kid. I thought of a truck -a I thought a truckload of mom's pastries and two volumes of Urusei Loom would do the trick. But even if all that planning failed anyway... I still want to make things right, because no matter what, I cherished our friendship. Now the question I want to ask is, do you? Yeah. After receiving the response that I had hoped for, Natsuki and I settled down and began talking over a few things, which eventually turned into stories. Stories about our time apart and what life was like during that time. We even got ourselves something to eat for the time being, since Natsuki was in fact really hungry. <laughs> 